Let's talk about beta males, gents. This last week, I had a run-in with someone that I would describe as a beta male. But I want to make it clear that the terms beta male and alpha male, they're not necessarily scientifically accurate. They get a bit overblown in social media. And I don't want to encourage you to have this mindset where you think that a man who is kind, compassionate and caring is a beta male, that they're a weak man. The reason that I use the term beta male is because I believe it's the best term to describe a particular kind of man, a man who wants to be seen as high status, who wants to exercise control, wants to be seen as dominant, but does it through pretty pathetic ways. And one of those pathetic ways is the way that they behave online, particularly if they turn into an internet troll or if they turn into somebody who starts calling people out but in a way that isn't really done with much courage. And on Wednesday night, during a TikTok Live, I came across the epitome of one of these people. They were repeatedly coming up. They'd been sitting there for an hour and they were saying things like, you blocked me on your other account. I'm always stitching and replying to your videos. Why are you ignoring me? Are you afraid to confront me? Normally, the ones that do this, they're anonymous troll accounts. They're teenage boys who are projecting behind the safety of their screen. This person, was a 35-year-old man married with a child. A millennial adult spending his spare time at quarter to midnight on a Wednesday night, sitting on a live stream on TikTok, getting angry at somebody who has a difference in political opinion. But not only that, desperately trying to get that person's attention and desperately trying to bring them down. This guy in the chat to every single hate comment would be responding to them, thumbing them up, saying, yeah, you tell him. It was the epitome of beta behaviour. And this is what I mean by betas. This man is a beta because he wants to have control. He wants to be recognised and he wants to be validated. But the way that he has learnt to do that is by seeking validation from teenagers in the comments section on somebody else's live stream for a mutual dislike of that person. Ultimately, it is man-child behavior, and if you're the kind of person of that age in particular, married with a kid, well, you're just ending up like that episode of South Park when Kyle's dad becomes an internet troll. Now, the thing is, underneath all that, at the core of this guy, will be a common trait that the supposed alphas share too. Both want to feel control and both want dominance. It's just the alpha algorithm types posture as being dominant when they're actually just being cruel and being dickheads most of the time. When a man who's posing as an alpha isn't actually self-assured, you can see straight through that. And it's important that we, even as confident men, recognise and openly admit about our own insecurities and our vulnerabilities. But the fake alphas, they don't do that. They pretend that they are stone solid. They think that they're a stoic or they will portray themselves as one when they really aren't. Now, the beta male is not dissimilar to this. It's just the way that they will try to exercise dominance and authority is a sort of half-assed, more pathetic attempt. So if you take one of these aspiring alpha types like Andrew Tate, at least he actually has the courage to say what he thinks and put it out there very publicly. But the beta male on the internet, they're like this guy. They're voicing their opinions. They're not fully hiding, but they're not fully owning it. They're loitering around in comment sections and mainly just kissing the asses of other people to try and be validated by them. There's a particular category of these people that you would call the beta orbiters. These are essentially men who loiter around circles of woke women, say everything that those women say politically, even if they don't necessarily agree with it themselves. And the only reason they're doing that is because they want to be validated by those women. Some of them have a sexual motivator behind it. They think that if they appease these women through sharing their politics, these women are going to sleep with them, but they never will because these women will always see them as the friend zone. They see them for what they are, a beta orbiter, a weak man that circles around them. And it's sad because it doesn't actually build self-esteem. It doesn't help these people to grow. They attempt to gain a superficial sense of status and control through futile means. Rather than working to elevate themselves and and others around them, they try to drag others down because they think that is putting them in the alpha position. And as our society becomes increasingly digitalized and as more men start losing purpose in this society, it's quite inevitable that we're going to end up with more of these people if we don't call them out for it. Or by preventing it in the first place, by encouraging young men to take responsibility, to grow themselves and to support one another so that they don't fall into the trap of becoming like these types of people. 
And if you are watching this right now, I imagine you probably aren't this kind of person, but maybe you were in the past. When I was a teenager, I was an alt-right internet troll. I was angry and projecting through illegitimate and cowardly memes. Now I'm still angry and semi-project, semi-rant on screen. But at least I've been able to monetize it. And this is where the key lesson comes in that I want you to take away from this video. As we become more digitalized, there is a spectrum emerging between the consumer and the creator on social media. We all fit onto that spectrum somewhere. Some people are fully removed from it, but they are basically the modern day equivalent of a Buddhist monk living in a Tibetan monastery. If you have managed to fully back away from social media, fair play to you. But for most people, they are going to be a consumer. And I would heavily advise that you move away from that consumption end of the spectrum as much as you possibly can and closer to the creator side. And the core reasons for this are for your own freedom, for your own growth and for your own earning potential, but also and particularly with short form content to protect your mental health, to protect your intelligence and to protect your attention span. And this doesn't mean you have to go the full way by becoming a productivity junkie like Ali Abdal. We're not in this to get a sponsorship from you all. It's about realising there is an opportunity for you to grow, learn and share your experiences online, build networks with it, make some money from it and gain more freedom. And to help you grow into the modern man, a man who is strong but is emotionally intelligent and supports one another, not a man who falls into this beta male trap of becoming an online troll. Through mindful consumption, research, learning skills, building audiences, building networks, these are things that will benefit you in the long term. And to do that, you build and grow. Whether it's building these, whether it's building here, or whether it's building in here, develop yourself on all fronts, grow as a man, don't become a mindless consumer and try to drag other men down who are on the route to improving themselves. It's not about being an alpha, it's about doing what's best for other men and for society as a whole. And if you want to gain a deeper understanding of what alpha and beta male really means, check out the work of a guy called Franz de Waal. His TED Talks, his guest speaking on podcasts and his books are going to teach you far more about being an alpha male than a bunch of men walking around with their chest out on YouTube. And as always, guys, be strong, be kind to each other, and I will see you next week.